All right, hello everyone. My name is Cole, and as you can see in my handy dandy little thing. <laughs> Drawing a blank what this is called. And then, that's my name too. All right, so I'm 15, I'm a sophomore and I'm homeschooled, and if you knew me, you'd be pretty surprised that I was even able to get up on this stage, because I'm not the most outgoing person. I'm, you know, on the quieter side, and a lot of my friends can vouch for that. Just so you know a little more about me, I have four siblings. My oldest sister's name is Angela. She is 23 years old. Then I have another sister named Olivia, who is 19 years old. Then comes me, and then we got a big gap in age. I got my little brother, Cooper, who is five years old. Then I have another little sister named Scarlett, who is two years old. <laughs> and boy, let me tell you, there is not a single place you can go in my house where it's quiet. <laughs> you can't. You want to know why? Because my house is a zoo. It is loud. And when my mom would say she's taking Cooper and Scarlett to, let's say, the library, I'd be like, yes, yes. I mean, I'll miss you. I'll miss you. I'm kind of like shoving them out the door. No. I love my family. They're all very supportive, and we're all very close. And I truly believe that everyone needs a close relationship, if not with your family, with a friend. So I'm going to start off with this one small phrase. I think it's powerful, but I can't remember where I heard it. I might have read it in a book. It's very simple. It just says that we weren't made to be alone. We were made for friendship and community. Because when we're alone, we're lost. We make mistakes. We make bad choices. We need, like, a buddy to keep us in check. And a lot of people deny that fact. A lot of people believe they can just do all things by themselves. For example, there's a guy in my soccer team. He thinks he can just take the ball, ignore his whole team, no matter how much we're yelling at him, hog the ball, drive it all the way up the, up the field, score, and win the game for us. Okay, I'm honest with you. It works like 95% of the time, but still he hogs the ball and it annoys me. <laughs> and if you've played a sport like soccer, you know there's almost always someone like that on your team. Unless it's you, but still that proves my point. <laughs> anyway, the fact is we need help. We need friendship. And like I said, a lot of people deny that fact. There's also a lot of people where that fact just blows right past them. They don't even get a single thought, even though it is all around us. In almost, in almost every movie, in almost every book, the main character always has help. The main character's got a best friend, a team, a teammate. I don't know. The main character always has help. Even if the character's fictional, the fictional character always has help because he or she can't do it alone. No one can. Even God said that we weren't made to be alone. In Genesis 2.18, it says, The Lord God said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So God went and made Eve for Adam because he needed help. Even in the beginning of time and creation, us humans, we weren't made to be alone. So when I first started coming to Calvary, I was in sixth grade. So I was in the boys' brigade in the kids' wing. And I remember my first day, I was super scared, and I was, like, hiding behind my mom. And I remember she introduced me to an old, um, an old friend of hers. And I ended up becoming really good friends with her son. And I'm still really good friends with him today. And the point of that little story was that if it weren't for that friendship with that boy, I probably wouldn't have stayed in Boys Brigade. I would have been too uncomfortable. And same thing goes when I started second, the youth group here. I was so scared, but if it weren't for that one friend and the fact that everyone down there was so welcoming and I made so many new friends, I would have been too uncomfortable and I probably wouldn't have stayed. And now, youth group is like what gets me through the week. Wednesdays are now like my favorite day of the week. Well, I mean, Friday's still pretty good, but Wednesday's right up there. <laughs> and I learned that friendship is very important, no matter what. Everyone needs it, because without it, we are alone and lost, because we are stronger together. So after making all these new friends, I started craving friendship with Jesus, and I realized that he already loves me. He already loves us, and he's already our friend, and he's just waiting for us to turn to him. And I read these three verses in Matthew, and it, like, sent chills through me because it, like, opened my mind. So in Matthew 27, 50 through 52, it says, And when Jesus had cried again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. When I first read these three verses a while back, it sent, like, chills through me. Because like I said, it like opened my mind. It made me realize that Jesus loves us and he died for us. Jesus is our friend and he died for us. And he saw all of it coming too. He prophesied his death multiple times. He knew he was going to die a painful death, and yet he still did it for us. Jesus is our friend and he died for us. A friend who would die for you. Where in the world can you find a better friend than that? And friendship with Jesus does not just give us comfort and happiness like any other friendship. No, friendship with Jesus gives us freedom, hope, 
a new life, in a second life up in heaven. And he's just sitting up there waiting for us, where the streets are golden or are echoing with praises, just calling us home. So I'm going to close with the same phrase. I shouldn't even say phrase. I just say fact. We weren't made to be alone. We were made for friendship and community, and our loving God understands that. He feels for us. So if you're alone, just listen. Just listen, because someone is knocking at your door, and his name is Jesus. All you got to do is open up. Thank you.